All right, so your homework assignment, you had chapter six, homework number eight. Um, no surprises as far as your test goes, uh, you're gonna get two masses. And uh, I don't know, I don't really think that there's anything, I mean, obviously you're gonna do the review for the chapter test and you're paying attention right now, but as far as these questions go on your test, just mimic what you see in the problems that we do right now. There'll be no surprises on this kind of question here. Uh, you're, you will be required. The problem, you know, I guess that the only surprise would be that the question on the test has more parts to it than what these questions 32 to, to 35 say. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is make a free body diagram. Okay, so you know free body diagrams mean to label the forces. So you're going to call this one FG. You might even call it FG3, but I don't take off any points if you don't give that extra subscript. You're going to call this one also FG. You might decide to call it FG2, but I won't take off any points if you don't put that extra subscript. I will take off a point though if FG2 looks the same length or longer than FG3. Uh, larger mass has a larger force, and so therefore I want to see a longer vector for that. Then upward, what the length of FT should be is shorter than FG3, but longer than FG2. I don't take off points for that either, but I do take off a point if the two FTs don't look the same length. So just know that on your free, free body diagram, if you draw it exactly like you can see right there on my slides, you're gonna get full credit on that part of the test. Then um, your test, I don't think it actually says write an F net equation. It doesn't, it just goes right into finding the acceleration. But I'll probably make this part of the, of the question worth like eight points. And that means that for partial credit, if I see the F net equation, you'll get more partial credit than if I don't see any work done there. So what our F net equation will say is we're going to take all four of the forces that we see present right now. I'll just start writing them down. Doesn't really even matter what order I write them down in, but there's a preferred order that makes more sense. Okay, so those are the four forces that are in the problem. Now we have to decide whether we want a positive sign or a negative sign for each one of them. So you have to decide whether or not you think they're helping the acceleration or hindering the acceleration. So you picture this problem where a two, a three kilogram mass heavier than a two kilogram mass is going to cause the system to start to where the three kilogram mass falls and the two kilogram mass gets lifted upward. So that means that in my scheme of vectors, this one here is helping make it fall. So I'll put a positive sign. This one here is trying to prevent it from falling. So I'll put a negative sign. This tension force here, maybe that's a little bit difficult for us to talk about yet, except for some of you have recognized that it's always the same process. If one's positive, one's negative, vice versa. But if we think about what happens to our pulley, our pulley is gonna be forced to start spinning uh, clockwise in this problem. By the way, on your chapter test, uh, half the tests are going to have the heavy mass on the left-hand side or right-hand side. Half the tests will have it on the left-hand side. Then of each of those two halves, half of them have the heavy mass down low and the light mass up high, and half of them have the heavy mass up high and the lighter mass down low. So don't just think that you can draw this picture exactly like you see it in your homework assignments. I did use that kind of creative license to show me that, so that you're showing me that you understand what's happening in the problem. So just be prepared for that. This pulley is trying to spin clockwise, which means that this tension force is acting in the direction that the pulley spins. Therefore, that's why I'm gonna say that it gets a positive sign, okay? And uh, we'll circle it. Then lastly, we have FG2. FG2 is working against the two kilogram mass being lifted up. Its own weight wants to prevent that. So therefore this one here is gonna get a negative sign. All right, and that's what our free body diagram looks like. All right, now F net is Newton's second law equals M times A. What mass is accelerating? Actually, both of them are accelerating. So it's really total mass times A. FG3 is the three kilogram mass is its weight, 30 Newtons. FG2 minus 20 Newtons. The two FTs here do cancel each other out. Um, since I didn't ask to write the F net equation, you don't have to include them, but understand that if you get something wrong on this question, if they're there, you get more partial credit. So it's worth it to write them. 
Total mass is two plus three is five kilograms. Five kilograms times A equals 30 minus 20 is not 20, um, is 10 Newtons. So now in order to get the A by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by five. Uh, the kilograms is really part of this too. I'm, I'm recommending you leave the units out of the problem so that you don't mess up on the, um, on the uh, final answer you know, with your algebra. But do know that if you take the test, uh, hold on a second. If you take the makeup test, I do grade the units. If you're taking a disproportionate amount of time to finish the test, I will grade the units. In fact, if you're taking too long, I might even grade significant digits. And so all of these things could count against you. But if you just take the test like normal, finish it within, you know, I'm thinking this test shouldn't take you more than 90 minutes. I mean, really, honestly, if you were here at school, you would take a longer version of this test in 55 minutes. So the fact that this test would take you more than 90 minutes shouldn't happen. So if you're within the 90 minutes, I'm not grading units. I'm not grading significant digits. Um, but if you do other things, then that's what's going to happen. All right. Two meters per second squared. Question number 33 says a five and a three. So we do the same thing. So it's going to feel very uh, robotic here today. I apologize for that. FG5, FG3, tension force, a little bit shorter than FG5, a little bit longer than FG3, and also the same length on both sides. I'm trying to make a three out of that. It won't connect it. There we go. All right. The F net equation says F net equals FG five minus the tension force plus the tension force minus the FG three. I'll go through that plus and minus signs again on the next problem. We'll do it on every other one. Total mass times acceleration equals 50 minus 30. Total mass is eight. Eight times A equals 20. Uh, two and a half times. Question number 33, a one and a nine. So if you were really to draw this to scale, FG9 and FG1, I would make it that absurdly different, right? There's a tension force this way. Now, how much tension force? I don't know. So I don't know how long to make it. I just know that the teachers could mark it wrong if they don't look the same length and that FT is longer than FG1 but shorter than FG9. Okay, now we go to make our F net equation. F net equals, now I'm gonna write down all of the forces here. Now, if you're a robot, you might start by, I'll do this in both different ways, in both the ways that you could do this. FG1, FT, FT, FG9, or FG9, because you've seen that that one's heavier, so we might as well put it first. FT, FT, FG1. Really, honestly, it wouldn't matter which one of these two sets of, of forces that you use, as long as you put the right, the correct sign. So now we want to look at the problem again and go, okay, what's happening? What's happening here is a nine kilogram mass is a lot heavier than a one kilogram mass. So this time my pulley is going to spin counterclockwise instead. So any forces that help that happen, I want to make those positive. The forces that help that happen are this one and this one. The forces that try to prevent that from happening are this one and this one, okay? So now as I go back into my F net equation, as I put my signs, if you do the bottom equation, which I think I'll probably see more of these on the cha actual chapter test, this one's positive, this one's negative, this one's positive, this one's negative. But if you were to write them backward, then we would just put the signs backward, right? I mean, it's still the same sign. FG1 is negative, positive, negative, positive you'll still get the same answer. If by chance you don't do that, if by chance you put the one first and you go positive, negative, positive, negative, all that's gonna happen is your acceleration will come out to be negative. I don't know that I would mark that wrong because if you're looking at it from the backward perspective, you could call it a negative acceleration, that would be acceptable. Except for if you turn your test in later than the 90 minutes required, then I can start taking points off for things like that because it's not how I taught you. Okay, the proper thing that your textbook, me, Khan Academy, and everybody else is going to teach you, heavy mass goes first. 
So total mass times acceleration equals 90 minus 10. Total mass is 10. Those of you who uh, contacted me on email, you're good people because I subtracted 90 minus 10 and somehow got 70 instead of getting 80. Uh, my guess is I cut and pasted from something, maybe from an example. I don't know, maybe I just subtracted 90 minus 10 and got 70, but it was a mistake on my part. Then divide the 10 to the other side and we get eight meters per second, not what this slide shows, which is seven meters per second. 70 minus 10 is not, or 90 minus 10 is not 70. I should go back into the homeworks and see who put 70 there. And then in my mind, wonder why. Huh, that'd be a lot of work, but you know, you're a pretty small class. There's only, there's only 27 of you. And so far only maybe 20 of you have turned the homework in. So I should, and I know it's not Hunter, so I won't even look at yours because you already called me out on it. Uh, you weren't the first though. Um, somebody else called me out on it and I think they got extra credit. It could have been Lori because I see a two there in the extra credit column on my paper. So you might've been the first person to spot that. So you would be the people I wouldn't have to check because um, you know, I know that you're doing your homework yourself and then checking your answers with my answers and then wondering why they're different because I did a dumb math there. Hey, look at that, the chat all of a sudden pops up. Not me, Mr. Purser, don't look at my stuff. I can't get the chat to pop up up here. How about chat over here? What do we got to say today? Yes, they're just copying. I know it happens. Hey, remember, Hunter, that uh, that you don't have to be a person who uh, allows people to, to copy you either, right? So see, you and I are in the same predicament because we both know what we're doing. So then, uh, you know, don't help, right? All right, uh, anyway, uh, question number 35. Find the acceleration of this system. I already have the F net equation written down there, um, even though we still, if this was a test question. I don't have this one as a test question. It makes for an interesting scenario though, because the answer is easier. But because of the fact that it's not robotically the same as all the other problems, that sometimes makes things harder is when you have less to do. So when you put in F net equals M times A, and then you put in for three, 30, the two FTs cancel each other out. And then for three, you put in 30. Right there, total mass is six times A equals zero. That tells us that the acceleration has to be zero. In other words, if you hang two masses that are exactly the same weight from in a coupled motion, motion scenario, it's not going to move or it's not going to accelerate unless somebody like gives one a little push, then it'll start to move at a constant speed, um, but it doesn't accelerate which this question comes up in AP physics because of the fact that then the next part would be, could we solve for what the tension in the rope is? Okay, well now, if all you did was looked at this part right here, we know that the weight of the object has to be equal and opposite to the tension, otherwise there'd be acceleration. That's like fundamental to these problems. We make the vectors a length to tell us whether or not there's acceleration or not. That's what the very first section of the chapter was getting us into. So here, these two are equal and opposite. I know that the tension force must be 30 Newtons because it's not accelerating. The two vectors have to be the same. In fact, all four vectors in this problem all equal 30 in this problem. Question, that's it. That brings us to today's notes. And you do have one of these on your test. There's a little bit less to do here, but um, you know, it's funny, Dallas, before your, your uh, comment gets uh, sent up out of the chat, gets buried there, um, cheating is just called teamwork. You know what? That's the funny thing about real life, right? You guys are living in a light, in a, in a scenario that's not as real as real life. In real life, even your teachers, um, where did I get these example questions? I took them from a textbook, right? So wouldn't that be considered cheating? Wouldn't be the fact that I'm using teamwork or I'm, I'm not even doing teamwork because I'm not contributing any of the work. Somebody else, a professor wrote the textbook. Now, where I did contribute, we had to come up with the cash to buy the book. But real life jobs, 
you don't tend to have to do things by yourself. You tend to have a team that helps you work. So um, high school doesn't necessarily perfectly mimic real life, does it? Because of the fact that we uh, are are making you work completely by yourself. Not always. Some of your classes, I know that you do group projects and things like that. In my classroom, you guys do labs. Um, but what do we know about your labs? We know that there's a lab leader and then a bunch of lab chunks, right? Can you picture last year, lab group number, I don't even know what number, I don't know if you guys were at station number five, but there was a young lady that would be working on the lab while her bestie would be sitting up on the counter with her ginormously large phone just sitting there pushing the buttons on it, right? Does that uh, sound familiar to anybody that's out there? Eating Cheetos, exactly, see? You even know what I was what I was talking about. Cheetos. Who would eat Cheetos? Yeah, he was right there with you while you're eating Cheetos and pushing buttons. All right. I think well, that's enough time for you guys to copy down this problem. You still have to do a free body diagram on this problem on your chapter test. Uh, you don't have to color code your test question. My test question will be, or my examples will be color coded. Um, but you don't have to because you're just using a pencil anyway or one single pen. But in my color coding, I'm going to start by putting FG. And since it's for the two kilogram mass, I'm going to put FG2. Now, over here for the one kilogram mass, I'm using a color code. I'm going to draw an FG1 in a different color. You'll see why in a moment. Now, that one kilogram mass is being pulled by the, by the string. Meanwhile, the two kilogram mass is being held up by the string. So it makes sense for us to still have a tension force in the string. And since we expect acceleration, that tells me that I should make the tension force shorter than FG2. And then I should make the tension force the same length pulling on FG1, okay? So far, so good. Now there's one more force that goes into this problem. If all that was occurring was the one kilogram mass had its weight force downward, then we would have that accelerating downward. But obviously it doesn't accelerate downward because it's on a table. So therefore that tells us that the table is exerting an equal and opposite force upward. And we call that table force Fn. Remember Fn, the normal force? Here it is again, it's rearing its ugly head right here at the end as we finish up the chapter. Okay, now. In F net equations, which I don't require you to make the F net equation on this problem on the test, I do ask you to draw the free body diagram. It does not have to be color coded. Yes, the forces have to have subscripts. They don't need the one and the two, but they need the G's, the T's, and the N's. Okay? You have your F net, or you have your free body diagram. Now I'm going to make an F net equation, which is not required on your test. Your F net equation says FG2, FT, and FT. Notice this time, I did not include FG1. In the previous problems, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting all choked up on this stuff. In the previous problems, mass one was contributing a force that didn't want to let mass one move upward, right? Mass one's weight was downward, but mass one itself was being forced to accelerate upward. So the weight of it was in the direction of its motion, well, it was in the opposite direction, but it was still in the same uh, axes, right? The same dimension. Here, mass one, because of the pulley, because this is what pulleys do, pulleys change direction of forces, the pulley is causing mass one to be pulled forward horizontally on the table. So the direction of its acceleration is horizontal. The direction of its weight and normal force are vertical. Therefore, these two green forces don't get to go in the F net equation, okay? Confusing, but I just gave you the reasoning for it. I'll give it to you again on the next problem. Right now, let's just finish this one up. Total mass, I'm sorry, F net is total mass times acceleration equals FG2, and then the two, oh, but we didn't talk about the signs yet. Okay, so if we think this situation, which makes sense, this pulley is gonna spin clockwise. If it's gonna spin clockwise, that means that this force is helping that happen. 
whereas this force is trying to prevent it. So therefore, in terms of signs, this one's positive, this one's negative. Then this tension force, just like in the last section, it's opposite its counterpart. In other words, it's helping the rope slide around the pulley. So therefore it helps the pulley spin and therefore it's positive as well, which is nice because then what that means that we can just say these two cancel each other out. Let's not put that though, because that's ugly. You write that on your notes, which might be in the way. All we end up with mass total times A equals 20. Mass total is equal to three. Divide both sides by three and we get 6.7 meters per second squared. Now let's talk about the concept again. The one kilogram mass did not contribute any force to the F net equation. But what it did do to this problem is it contributed overall inertia. It contributed mass to the F net equation. So in other words, this two kilogram mass here, okay? Now I'm gonna draw something, please don't draw this on your paper. If this table was set up on the edge of a cliff, and you set this up like so. This is what you would do in the classroom with your, with your lab table. Uh, if you were to cut this string, this two kilogram mass is gonna free fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. But if you don't cut the string, the other mass contributes to causing the acceleration to only be two thirds as much because of the fact that it contributes some inertia. It contributes some mass to the overall problem. Okay, that's the concept. Question number two. We only have three questions today, I think. That's nice. Question number two, <laughs> funny that you see this one written like that, is on the makeup test. And on the makeup test, not only do you have to find the acceleration, but there's also a concept question that says, some people believe that a one kilogram mass cannot get a 10 kilogram mass sliding on the table. If there's no friction, what do you think? And then you have to explain it, not just solve it, you have to explain it. So don't take the makeup test, take the test on time. But you know what? If you do have to take the makeup test, your explanation can involve the math that you're gonna be doing anyway. So you start by doing this. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I think I missed the first part of that chat. Um, okay, so we begin by FG1. Okay, now. We know that FG1, the mass doesn't get the free fall because the, the rope is pulling on it. There's an FT. I know you shouldn't know. Why is he drawing those forces so incredibly small? It's because the truth is they are really small. The FTs in this case are less than 10 Newtons. Less than one kilogram of, of mass is what's there. So it causes everybody to be a really small force. What's a ginormous force is the green one that doesn't get to go in the equation. This one here, FG10, is 10 times longer than FG1, and therefore FN is also 10 times longer. Those two are equal and opposite. They cancel each other out. They also don't contribute to the F net equation because the movement of the 10 kilogram mass is that it's gonna accelerate horizontally. So its own weight force doesn't get to contribute to the F net equation. Our F net equation says F net equals. Also, don't forget, I said this to you beginning of the chapter. It's time for us to re remember this. Fn and F net, these are not the same thing. Nope, oh, big thing. Exclamation point. Don't mistake one for the other. Fn stands for normal. F net stands for net like the net gain. So don't think those two things are the same thing. Now I'm gonna get rid of all of that because that's just ugly mess. 
I don't know if I can erase that little piece. There. Okay. So F net equals the forward force that pulls down on the whole thing that causes the acceleration in the first place, minus the tension force that tries to resist that, but then plus this tension force that tries to aid it. Those two tension forces cancel out. F net, Newton's second law, total mass times acceleration equals Fg1. Fg1 is a, is a one kilogram mass would be 10 Newtons of force. Total mass is 11 kilograms. 11 kilograms times A equals 10 Newtons, which means that A equals 10 divided by 11. I think that's 0 0.9, 0 0.9. And then what it says on your, oh, if you're taking the makeup test and I asked you the question, some people believe that a one kilogram mass could not get a 10 kilogram mass sliding on a frictionless table. You would say this math proves that it's true. It's just that because it's such a small mass, compared to such a big inertia, it's not much acceleration, is it? Just a little bit. Okay, you got two homework assignments tonight. Your homework assignments are the 36 through 38. That's just three problems de dealing with coupled motion. And then you should also work on the chapter six review. I am going to collect this chapter six review prior to the next class. It's gonna count on time if I get it before 940 on Monday. And then we're gonna go over it together. I'm assuming that that's what the next slide is, is just to show some of both of those problems. It just so it shows the first two from chapter six review and then the three problems from here. So I'm gonna leave this slide up for a few moments. Some of you maybe uh, are getting started on the homework assignment, there they are, you can work on it. And if then anybody has uh, a question that they want to, ask me i just see a whole bunch of things dallas is speaking facts and uh i don't know do i need to go back and read the read the chat for anything i don't want to spend the time so if there's somebody if somebody put something in the chat that i need to see and then it got buried by whatever nonsense why i hate you why would i hate you i what i feel for you alexis is worse than hate it's called indifference Right, you just you just you're you're. It, it, it would be like if I worked at Amazon, because the or worked at let's pick up here at the Walmart distribution center. If I worked at the Walmart distribution center, and it said that I needed to put a box of Kleenex onto the uh, cart in order to go into the into the truck, do you think that that Walmart employee hates the box of Kleenex? Of course not. He's indifferent to it. It's just the product that that te that that employee has to work on. That's all I, that you are to me. You guys are just a product that I have to work on. It's my job to help you learn chemistry and physics. It's somebody else's job to help you learn math and English and everything else. And in the end, we have to be indifferent because you're out of our control, especially this year, you're really out of our control. At least when you're in my classroom, I have a little bit more control over helping mold you into a good physics student. But right now, all I can do is talk to you through the electronic airwaves. So your teachers are indifferent to you. I don't feel anything. If you think that I want to try to suppress your score, I don't. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get even. In other words, if you make things difficult for me on test day, I'm going to make things difficult for you on your test score, right? So if you just do everything normal, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you get a good test score. So you do the best you can. So I don't know if all your chat was about that, but um, that's it. I am done. So I am going to uh, ask you to go on, go have yourself a lunch or whatever it is you do before you go to your 11. You guys got a long time too, till 1140. Get your homework done. And if there's anybody that would like to stick around and talk to me, um, I'm just gonna sit here and we're gonna wait. I'm gonna close this, stop share, stop recording.